lot of battles, especially community initiatives, a lot of battles. Some are packed and some have, um, are just barely struggling to survive. But we're here today to celebrate the existence of listening ear. Um, it's not been a very easy journey, but however, with the support of the community, this initiative is standing. It is standing. I'm going to hand the microphone now to the visionaire, the person who has been behind listening ears, Rosebud for Girls, Community A Girls for the past 10 years. The one who has had to, you know, keep firing, keep roaring, roaring, roaring around year after year, from the first year to the second year, to the third year, to the fourth year, the fifth year, the sixth year, the seventh year, the eighth year, the ninth year, and the tenth year. A lot of people are hurting, and because I see the kind of society I've found myself, where everybody likes to keep to their business, nobody knows what is happening next door. I particularly got concerned when I found that there are people, maybe in house number one, they are ill, they are waiting for the ambulance to come, and next house is number three because it's maybe odd number on that side. The husband there is a doctor, the wife is a nurse, the neighbor doesn't even know. We are very passionate about not just beating about the bush in the community, but identifying what is the problem that is on brand and then look at what can we do to create a solution or to create a helping hand so that at least there can be some kind of effect of change in that particular circumstance. One thing that struck me is that since being the mayor, it has, it has been an eye-opener for me, especially you meet people who have done a lot for the community and received little or nothing. And today I'm saying a big thank you to everybody here today. <laughs> See, this thing here has been in operation for 10 years and uh, you focus on loneliness of the elderly. And if we can do anything to prevent or reduce the number of isolated elderly. You, not only that we are helping that person as a human being, but we are helping the council as well. This is one of those things that we need in this community. And you, in this charity, you have filled that gap. Every little step you can take to help this community, you are not doing it for your own self, but you are doing it for humanity and the impact that this charity has done in the last 10 years is phenomenal. Winston Churchill's black dog of depression follows loneliness like a shadow. Depression may be just around the corner, and the sad fact of life is that you cannot avoid shadows. However, you can turn the light on. At that time, we didn't really give it a name. It was a drop-in centre in Abbeywood. We met on Mondays, and uh, we just have it as a walking and then in the wake of that even though we didn't make any noise about it but because of the difference it is making of course people started to hear about it and that is when Stuart heard about me and then he came to see me and he told me about this community the training they were doing to train people as health trainers we looked at how can I put into practice what we have learned and then we saw this hall that is disused and then we started to set up the Field Good Friday Club. Toyin recognised that many people around here were lonely and depressed. And if we open our eyes, this is what we'll all see. But Toyin, instead of avoiding eye contact by looking at the ground as people walk past, decided to do something. In the last 10 years, the community has built up around listening ears. is a place where instead of opening a can of baked beans for lunch, People can share a healthy, nutritious meal with their newfound friends. Sometimes it's the little things that matter. When I spoke with that earlier on in the year, for me it shows the passion about the cause that she's holding on to. I won my 60th birthday because that really coincides with the 10th year anniversary of listening ears. I want it to be a celebration about listening ears, roast board for girls, and also community angels. And donations to go towards those services 
because I need it to continue. I like us to just sing a happy birthday to Tony Ogubanjo. Happy birthday to that actually kind of confirmed the calling I had to do something about isolation. One day in Abbeywood, I went to the post office on Asian Drive. So I just went to register a letter. When I was going, I noticed that the elderly, she should be about 83, 85. She was on the other side of the road. So I went into the post office and I must have spent at least 20 minutes in the post office. So when I came out, she was still there. And the care in me wanted to talk to her. So I just thought, because she was looking not too okay. So I asked her if she needed any help. She said she wanted to cross the road. Oh. And the cars wouldn't stop. Oh. So I took her shopping trolley. She was scared initially. But I just said, when I patted her back, just relax. So I took the trolley and took her hand on the other side. And I walked her across. And after we crossed, the way she was looking at me, she needed a hug. Oh. So I decided to give her one, and she wouldn't let go. Oh. <laughs> so she held on to me. So after about a few minutes, then she let go. And I saw she was crying. She said she has never been hugged for a long time. And then she told me what she usually does when she's coming from village. She will stay on the 177 bus go with it to the terminus in Thamesmith because the cars wouldn't stop and she will stay on the bus the bus turns around and comes to her side of the road and I just thought this can't go on